Eve. I believe this video will be going up on Christmas Eve. So if you celebrate, Merry Christmas Eve to you. I'm back at my parents' house in Toronto. This is the beautiful tree that we put up yesterday. My family has had a tradition now for a few years that every year, everyone in the family buys a new ornament for the tree. And we're at the point now where we're struggling to get them all on the tree, but we have managed to. I love it, it's so, so beautiful. I'm gonna have some of my closest friends over tonight for a little Christmas Friendsmas situation. So I'm gonna be making a few snacks and I thought I would show you what I make. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna make a charcuterie board. I've never made like a proper fancy charcuterie board before, so we'll see how it goes. And then I'm gonna make this uh, brie fig jam puff pastry delicious dessert appetizer. It's sweet and savory, so you can serve it at whatever point in the meal you want to. My mom's gonna help me, so if she's not too shy, maybe she'll be in the video. I doubt it. She doubts it, but. So I've set the table. My parents' dining room is bright red, so it's festive all year round. I got these napkins at Loblaws last year, actually, and they're really cute. They've got these like uh, little acorns and stuff on them. And we're gonna have some Christmas crackers. This is the start of my centerpiece, which is just a vase with some gold ornaments in it. And we're gonna cut some evergreen uh, off of our tree and probably stick it in there or something, but okay, let's get started. This is what I use for my brie puff pastry. And I just get it from President's Choice from Loblaws. It's pre-made butter puff pastry. So you can make your own if you've got the time and patience, but um, I just use the pre-packaged one. My mom is watching me film. You can't watch me film because I get embarrassed, especially if you're not gonna be in the video. So it comes packaged like this. We're gonna open it up. Ta-da! So when you buy them, you keep them frozen, and then I usually just take it out and leave it on my counter for an hour or two. And when you roll it out, it's just like one flat piece of puff pastry. So I've unrolled my butter puff pastry. I've put it onto a baking sheet. It actually comes in parchment paper, so you don't need to use an extra piece. So this is what it looks like, and what you're gonna do is divide it up into three sections. So I just do this roughly. I'm not making a cut, I'm just kind of giving myself a general guide like that. What we'll start with is putting our fig jam into the center and then some pieces of brie in as well. I'm gonna take my brie and just cut it in like little triangles. I'm actually gonna sit because I feel like, oh, that's much better. Taking our wheel of brie and I'm gonna cut little triangle pieces. You can cut it as thick or thin as you like. I actually don't love brie, so I do pretty thin pieces, so. I probably only need about like eight pieces. Cutting my brain. Can we take our jam? Take our little spatula, scoop it out, and just dump it, or not dump it, <laughs> spread it onto our middle section. Like this. Ooh, nice. And you can do as thick or thin a layer as you like. And you can also use any jam. I've used apricot jam for this, raspberry jam. The thick jam just adds a nice complex flavor, but explore your jam options. This is how much um, fig jam I've used. And you can see I've kept it all like in my middle third section. And now I'm gonna put my brie on. So I just lay it out like that all the way down. So that's what we've got. We've got our fig jam, we've got our brie. And now this is the fun part. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make incisions in the outer two sections, and then you're gonna start braiding your pastry over. So you get this really beautiful, well, braided pastry. How's that? That's good, okay. So what you're gonna do is literally cut about one inch sections all the way down, and you'll do the same amount on the other side. So I've got 10 here, and I'm gonna cut 10 here as well. There we go. All right, my mom is helping me with this portion because I need two hands. So what we're gonna do is take one side of our pastry, fold it over, take the other side, fold that over and you're gonna do that all the way down. And then for the end, you wanna make sure you just kind of press that in so nothing spills out and we'll do the same with this other side here. And that's it. 
Thank you to my camera helper. The brie is done, and the great thing about this pastry is that you can make it ahead of time, which is what I'm doing. Wrap it in the parchment paper, pop it in your fridge, and then when you're ready to bake it, you just throw it in the oven. And I don't remember exactly how long it bakes for or at what temperature, but I will pop it down below if you do want to make this then you'll have all that information. So just gonna wrap this guy up and pop him in the fridge. Okay, it's a little bit later now. We're gonna get started on the charcuterie. So this is my first time doing this to this fancy extent. We've got olives, almonds, all sorts of nuts prosciutto, cheese, artichoke. So let's see what we can make out of this. I'm gonna put you guys here. Welcome to Greta's charcuterie DIY making class. I've already got my olives in this little crystal boat bowl thing. So I think I'm gonna take these artichoke hearts and put them in this creme brulee ramekin we're gonna improvise. Oh, oh. that went everywhere. Little cleanup. Mm artichokes. Oh, they taste very good. There's a little bit of sauce we can use for something. Nothing goes to waste. Done. Should we do some prosciutto rolling? So I'm just gonna roll these babies up into little prosciutto cigars. I don't condone smoking, but I do condone this smoked meat. Ta-da! I'm gonna kind of I've got some cheese here, I'm gonna sort of fan out. I know you can't see any of this, but I will show you the finished product in the end. Let me know down below what your favorite smoked meat is. My mom keeps laughing in the background, and um, you know what? Sometimes people are gonna laugh at you, they're gonna get you down, but you just gotta keep making your charcuterie board. Cover half a wheel of brie. Should I cut it? I'm gonna cut a couple slices. It'll be sort of people's guide for for the size of slice they should be cutting. You know, just a rough guide. A little bit of uh, nuts. Tomato me, please. Thank you. This is looking good. Oh, more tomatoes. Wow, there, there's no tomato shortage in this house, I'll tell you that. Doing a little, little brie incisions here. Okay, our boursin, our boursin plate. Another cheese knife. Assemble. Pour sand down. It's okay, just kind of put it in place there. Some apricots. Ooh, I'm gonna put these around the board like this. How's that? That's nice. I think I've got a real knack for this uh, charcuterie situation. Okay, and now just some berries, I think. We've got blackberries and raspberries. Okay, berries are final touch. I'm gonna sprinkle them around. Ooh. Okay, we'll put that one on. This is very cathartic. I think we're done. All right, the big charcuterie reveal. There she is. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with myself. Got our prosciutto, some gouda, these little toasts that my mom makes, artichoke, olives, roasted almonds, some boursin with um, apricot, raspberries, and brie, and tomatoes, and more raspberries. All right, guys, my guests are gonna be here soon. I wanted to show you the finished product, our table. So we added some Christmas crackers. Our centerpiece has this beautiful greenery. And then also strung up some of these like little dollar store snowflake streamers. And our tree now that it's a little darker. Okay, that is it for today. I think people are gonna start arriving very soon. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a happy holiday, whatever you celebrate, and I'll see you soon. Oh, they're here. Okay, bye.